The five pillars of exercise for fat loss. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategies. One look on their faces, tell you they ain't slick, man. Can walk a couple miles in my shoes. I got a hundred miles and I'm through. So I got a question simply for you, you, you. Tell me how you want to do it. Today we're talking about the five main points for using exercise in order to burn fat. Let me be clear about what this video is not. This video is not about diet or nutrition, eating to lose fat. It's also not about building strength or building muscle. It's strictly about using exercise to lose fat. So getting directly into pillar number one, which is the whole point of using exercise in order to lose fat is by burning that fat. In another video, I'll get specifically into how your body actually burns fat. But for now, just know that your body oxidizes fat, burns it in order for you to then use it as energy for your exercise. And the biggest indicator of your body doing it, the most obvious simple indicator is you start to breathe heavier than normal. That being said, forget about any other form of exercise. Forget about the resistant training, weight training, Pilates, yoga, any of that stuff, anything that's focused mostly on building strength, forget about that stuff. Those exercises are of course good for you and beneficial for you, but in terms of burning fat, they pale in comparison to pure cardio. So don't bother doing any other kinds of exercises that involve building strength and or muscle. Focus on cardiovascular exercises that are designed specifically to burn fat. Pillar number two is understanding the definition of cardiovascular exercise, or at least the way I think of it, the way I'm referring to it in this video. That is simply any activity that leads directly to your lungs working and thus your breath and you breathing harder than normal. That simply being any activity which leads directly to your lungs working so that you are breathing heavier than normal for an extended period of time, say at least 20 minutes. So when you say, what about weightlifting? Like when I lift weights, that makes me breathe heavily too. Yes, for me it does the same thing. The problem is that when you're lifting weights, when you're doing a set, at some point you have to end that set and you're supposed to rest in between sets. When you do that, a large reason for resting is so that you can catch your breath. Catching your breath is the exact opposite of what we want to do when we're talking about cardiovascular exercise, when we're talking about using that to burn fat. The point of using cardio as an exercise to burn fat is your lungs are continuously working. You're continuously demanding effort from them. If you stop and rest so that you can catch your breath, you're giving your lungs a chance to relax. That's the opposite of what we want. So if cardiovascular exercise is that simple definition, your next question probably is, okay, then what kind of exercises should we be doing? Which brings me to pillar number three, which is enjoyment. It doesn't matter what exercise you do. As long as number one, obviously, it doesn't lead to you getting injured or harming yourself. And as long as it adheres to the parameters of you breathing heavier than normal for an extended period of time. As long as it adheres to that, it can be whatever you want it to be. That's probably not what you want to hear. What you want to probably hear is you want me to give you a specific exercise regimen and say, do these exercises in this order, you know, this amount of time over and over again, and here's the result you, you will get because of it. But that's not what I do on this channel. And one of the biggest reasons for that is, is because I don't know you. So let's say I say, okay, well then part of your exercise regimen is to go climb a mountain or to get on the treadmill for an hour. Well, what if you don't like that? What if you don't want to do it? If you don't, then you're not going to. And then what's the point? I will have wasted both of our times and I'm not about that. The real hard work when it comes to doing cardio is not the actual cardio exercise itself. For me, the real hard work is the fact that you're going to have to experiment with different exercises to figure out what works for you and what you enjoy because when you're doing cardio, that you actually enjoy, you want it to be to a level where you want to do it, you look forward to do it, you wake up early so that you can make time for it during the day. Whatever 
unforeseen circumstances take place during that day that might interrupt your ability to do that cardio, you always figure out a way around those circumstances so that you can do the, uh, that cardio because that's how much you want to, that's how much you're looking forward to it. So doing the actual cardio, it does take a lot of effort, but because you enjoy it, you enjoy putting out that amount of effort. The real hard work comes in when you're trying to figure out and experiment with stuff to figure out what works for you and what you enjoy. That's going to take time, it's going to take effort. Partly of which because it's on you to be creative, to think of outside the box, to think of things, exercises where maybe they're mainstream exercises but you modify them in a way where normally, traditionally, you wouldn't like doing them but you're able to modify them so that you actually do. For example, me, I have a manual treadmill. So it means it doesn't have any, it doesn't have a motor, it doesn't have any electricity to it, it's just powered by you walking on it. And I can walk on it, I can use it, it's fine, it's not a big deal, but it's also pretty boring to just walk on that treadmill. Because it's boring, I don't look forward to doing it, I'm not going to do it as often as I should. But when I make the slight modification of just turning around, facing backwards and then walking backwards on that manual treadmill, now that I actually enjoy that. It's a small little adjustment, a small little modification, but that small little adjustment I enjoy. It makes it enjoyable for me and because of that I do it on a daily basis and I look forward to it. Another example I cite repeatedly on this fitness playlist is that I run, but I don't enjoy the act of running. When I run my lungs burn and my legs feel heavy and because of that it's just not enjoyable. However, because I've experimented, I found that running is most effective to me when it comes to losing fat, when it comes to getting shredded, losing weight, getting in shape. For me, nothing beats running. And so in the summer, when I do run, I look forward to it. I do it on a daily basis, even though I do not enjoy the act of it, but I love the results. The point of enjoyment is that if you genuinely enjoy doing a cardio exercise, you will repeatedly do it. The more you do it, the more consistent you are, the more fat you're gonna burn. But it's up to you to figure out and decide which exercises you actually enjoy. Now you're probably asking, how much cardio should you do and how often? Which brings me to pillar number four, which is the American Heart Association recommends 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity a week. And I completely agree with that. So however you want to split it up during the week, as long as at the end of seven days you've done 150 minutes worth, you're good. So if you want to do three sessions of 50 minutes or five sessions of 30 minutes or you want to do 22 minutes every day, whatever it takes for you to get 150, that's what you should try to strive for every week. You can do more than that, it's fine, but your baseline should be 150 minutes a week. Which then probably brings up the question of, okay, well then how hard should I go? Like how much effort should I put into it? Pillar number five is intensity. So for intensity, I recommend that you put in full effort, as much effort as you can muster given that within that effort, you still enjoy whatever it is you're doing. So you should never feel like this is torturous. You should never think to yourself, oh, I don't want to do this, or I just can't wait till it's over with. You never want to have those thoughts or those kinds of feelings. You always want to have a baseline of enjoyment, but within that baseline, you should be pushing as hard as you can. But the third point is, maintain a pace. So again, it's all about continuality. So in this case, continuing the exercise is way more important than the intensity of the exercise. What I'm talking about is, again, you want to keep your lungs moving. You want to keep demanding effort from them. You don't want to have to stop and rest and catch your breath. So whatever exercise you're doing, do it at a pace so that you can at least maintain that baseline pace throughout your entire workout without having to stop and rest. And if that pace is super slow, that's fine. Don't be embarrassed, don't feel self-conscious, it's perfectly fine, perfectly understandable. So much better to maintain a slow pace throughout the entire exercise than to try to have a moderate pace but have to stop 
here and there, or even once, to try to catch your breath. So say for example, you decide to do 30 minutes of walking every day. That's great. So you go for that walk and let's say you're a beginner and at the beginning of trying to do this 30 minutes every day of walking, when you do that walk, when you finish it, there's a little bit of fatigue there. It was kind of fatiguing to do that 30 minutes. Perfectly fine. During whatever exercise you choose, it's fine to increase your pace and decrease your pace as many times as you want, as long as you don't stop. There should be a baseline pace that you never break. You never break that pace and you never stop to catch your breath. So you can go a little bit faster if you want, if you feel like it, it's good. You want, if you need to slow down after a while and maintain your baseline pace, it's perfectly fine. After doing that half hour walk for weeks or months on end, at some point it's gonna to start to feel easy. At some point it's gonna to get to the point where not only does it feel easy, but you're gonna to get to the point where it feels effortless. So you'll feel like I'm no longer getting benefit out of doing this 30 minute walk because that's how easy it feels that's how effortless now it feels to me to walk for that half an hour that's good that's what's supposed to happen that means you're getting in shape your body is adapting to that stimulus at that point or hopefully you know prior to that point where it starts to feel that easy hopefully you decide to keep pushing your lungs. That's what you want to do. You want to keep demanding effort from your lungs. If it starts to feel easy, that means your lungs aren't working as hard as they could be, and so you need to start demanding more from them. So in order to do that, you could increase the amount of the activity and the exercise that you're doing. So instead of going for a 30 minute walk, maybe now you go for a 45 minute walk. Or maybe instead of increasing the time, the amount of exercise you're doing, let's say you up the intensity by starting to jog instead of just walking. And then let's say when you start to jog, you can only make it say four minutes of jogging before you feel like you have to stop and rest. Like I said, it's perfectly fine to increase your pace and decrease your pace throughout whatever activity, exercise you're doing and keeping it fun for yourself as long as you don't actually stop. So if you jog for four minutes, now you're tired, you feel like you have to slow down, perfectly fine, understandable, slow down, but don't stop. Start walking instead of jogging. And then if you have to walk the rest of that 30 minutes, perfectly fine. If you feel like somewhere within that, the rest of that 26 minutes while you're walking, you feel like you could try jogging again, you want to, it'd be fun for you to do, then go ahead and try that again. And if you need to walk again after that, it's perfectly fine. Point is, little by little, you increase your intensity as your fitness goes up. So it never gets super easy because the easier it gets, the harder you push. And as long as it's still enjoyable for you, that's the trend you should look for when you're doing cardiovascular exercises. So push as hard as you can while still enjoying yourself. And as it gets easier, you work harder. Three, two, one, Those are the five pillars of exercise for fat loss. It's all about burning fat through making yourself breathe harder for an extended period of time. It's that breathing harder part that's the strong indicator. It's not sweating, don't get the two confused. Just because you're sweating does not mean you're burning fat, it just means you're hot and your body's trying to cool itself off. Yes, sweating could be a byproduct of you burning that fat, but the main indicator of it is, are you breathing hard because of the exercise? So I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, informative, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you know of anybody that this video may apply to, may help, then please share that video with them as well. Also, hit that thanks button down below. When you do, it highlights every comment that you leave so it stands out and it directly supports the channel. So for anybody that does that, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. As always, like, share, comment, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any of the videos go live on this channel. And until then, I will see you guys next week. I tell the truth, don't shy away. I call my own, no hide away. Look at me now, man, bright as day. How you going good? How you going rock with me, man? Straight to the bank, man. Stop with the games. Look at me now when I'm not with a plane. Woo!